Tampa Bay, because I've lost one team now. Uh, oh, Philadelphia Eagles. You didn't see. And then oh, the ninth team was the Chiefs. You see? Yeah. So when I was ready, I was ready. And guess who I beat out, Kenneth? I was so ready that I beat out the only kicker, the first kicker, pure kicker in the Hall of Fame. And he played seven years after with uh, Minnesota and Green Bay. After the, the Chiefs got him. I beat the best kicker in the history of the game, head to head every day, to the point where they let him go and they kept me. And then in my first game, my first field goal was a 50-yarder. And I had to make it. I remember running on the field crying, saying, you know what, I paid my dues with all those rejections. Now I'm ready. And I made it. Later in that game, I hit a 57-yarder that almost went to the top of the net. That was, a, that was the fourth longest field goal in NFL history. Club record. You think that wasn't a statement to my teammates? Maybe he was a good choice. Maybe he was okay to let go of Jan Center. He was in the Pro Bowl the next year. But would that have happened if I had given up? Of course not. It's also, though, how I didn't give up. I didn't give up by focusing on working harder, learning how to stay focused, and looking at this as a good thing, not as getting beat down. And let me tell you, there were moments when I felt beat down, so I don't want to... There are moments when we're down, guys. Can I have the attention over here? Thanks. You want to ask a question? What? How long? Well, when I uh, started, I qualified with my 100th field goal in 1984. And you have to make 100 field goals. Here's another cool thing. I qualified at 76.1%. The reason I know that I've got that football at home is all painted up. And then, from that point on, I kicked 84%. So I kept getting better. But uh, I, when, I, when I left the game, I was the most accurate kicker in NFL history for 14, 15 years. And uh, you know, now there are other kickers that probably are breaking my record. But I set a standard. When I went into the game, Jan Stenner had one of the records. The average kicker made about 60% of his field goals. And then maybe 65%. I took it up to 80%. It was pretty cool. But I, that was about a process. It's not about the numbers. If I thought about numbers, <coughs> then I would have said the chances of making the NFL, do you know what the chances are of making the NFL from elementary school? One in 20,000. One in 20,000. One in 20,000. You think that would empower me? I got a one in 20,000 chance. I focused on what I had to do. I had focused on, on the place and the emotional place I put myself when I studied focus when I practice focus and what you do in practice and what you do in your, your rehearsal and homework is seeing what is this going to matter in class how am I learning this make it real for you that's how I began to practice so I got very intense I went back to Harvard after after my career in 2000 and I got everything was an A minus or higher the better student when I'd gone through my career because I'd learned how to Focus and pay the price. Well, actually, I was a kicker, not a putter. The best putter's guy I, I think is Ray Guy. He's awesome. The best kicker was a guy named Jan Stenerud. Jan's career percentage was 67%, and to get specific, he was 58%, and Arrowhead Stadium, I was 85%. So it's kind of cool, right? Because I looked up to him. He was a great kicker and a great guy. He and my father became friends. So it's not about him not being a great kicker. It's, it's that you can surprise yourself. The more you get into being more yourself. And when you're having those moments of not feeling powerful, you ask yourself, look in the mirror. Don't put it on somebody else. Don't say, I'm not feeling good and this kid pisses me off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make him feel embarrassed. That's, that's not manly. That's not honorable. Think about what you got to do. And the more you do that, the more you're going to be good, not at some things. You're going to be good, better at everything. Does that mean all of you are going to be A-plus students? No, but you'll be the best Sean, or the best Kenneth you can be. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because you're not going to play football forever. Even if you make football in the NFL, the average career is 3.6 years. So you make it at 22, 23, you're done at 27. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? 
So what, what it becomes is learning how to focus and bring passion. Finding stuff that you love, man. You just can't wait to do. And the things that you don't love, keep that focus and make the most of them because they're going to apply that discipline will build your character and you'll be better at everything else too. Because sometimes it can't all be fun. Uh, do you ever feel like you love life? What's that? Do you ever feel like you love life? Oh yeah. What's your name? Mm-hmm. See, now remember I asked about uh, who's going to ask the, 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 the courageous question? You're going to get this football, Adrian. I'm going to sign that for you. Give him a hand. But giving up, man, we all feel that way. We all feel at times like giving up. And you know what? I'm going to surprise you. There are probably some things you probably shouldn't give up on. Give up on the things that don't give you the power within. Give up on the things that don't increase your capacity to love, to make good choices, to focus. Without focus, you've got nothing. I'm, going to talk, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to talk about the Cardinals. You know what's wrong with the Cardinals today? They had a leader last year, Kurt Warner. A leader on the field and off. Kurt Warner lives just 300 yards from my house. Mohammed Ali lives 200 yards from my house. Yeah, I've been lucky enough to meet Mohammed Ali and get to know him too. And you know what? The leader, I'll tell you about Mohammed Ali later if you want. The leader of that team was Kurt Warner by what he did on the field, but also they saw him as a senior out the good family man, worked hard, and he made throws, and he got hit, he got back up, he made mistakes, he had bad games, he just kept doing it. And now look how much they missed him. But really what the outcome of that is, when you stop having a leader, every one of you could be a leader in your own way in this room. Everyone in your own way. You hear me? Everyone in your own way can be a leader. Remember that. Find out what that style will be for you. I mean, it'll always have courage involved. It'll always have good focus. It'll always have loyalty. I got all your backs. I'm not going to have your back at the expense of his back. I'm going to try to honor everybody around me. Those are the guys that need to be rewarded. But are there moments when you want to give up? Yeah. And that's where you have to figure out, what do I focus on, Adrian? That's what it's about. What do I focus on? One good way to do it is getting back to Mount Rushmore, one of my idols. We talked about Abraham Lincoln and George Washington. I know a little bit about them. Teddy Roosevelt. That was a guy who had asthma growing up. He was a scrawny kid. He was the kind of kid that got bullied. Did you read about Teddy Roosevelt? It's a great book by Edmund Morris on Teddy Roosevelt. I would really recommend it. Hold on, I see it. I see it. Teddy Roosevelt was a scrawny kid. And he said, I'm not going to be scrawny all my life. You're next, okay? When I'm done, I'm going to ask you, okay? But hold on. Let me just tell the story here. I'm glad you have a question. Teddy Roosevelt said, I'm just going to make myself strong. And as a kid, at your age, when he was 13, he started to lift weights. And he got stronger and he got stronger. He overcame what back then in 1890, 1880, was thought of as a lifetime condition. If you had asthma, it was, you're going to be like this your whole life. <laughs> he not only overcame it, not only became president, he went to Harvard, he was a world expert on ornithology, on birds. He became a good boxer. He went out, actually, to the West, and he actually captured a couple criminals and took them back by himself, murderers, took them back and put them in jail. Can you imagine riding a horse? you got these guys who are sleeping at night for three days on them and you bring these guys back and they might murder you at night. He was one tough guy. And he channeled that weakness into power by focusing on what he could do. So surround yourself, Adrian, with people that inspire you. You know what happens outside this school? If you don't learn this now, when you get a fight, what's your name again? Logan. Logan, stand up for me, buddy. I'm going to tell you something right now. Logan, you're 14, 13? Okay. You know what this is right here? That's assault. Did you know that? When you're an adult and you do this to somebody that's right, that is assault. So if you don't learn to handle your emotions, Roosevelt, you can find yourself in jail just for doing something 
As simple as that. You've got to find how you handle your emotions. When Peyton Manning, you know who Peyton Manning is, right? Peyton Manning has thrown a lot of interceptions in three games. He has got to feel awful. But is it going to help his team if he goes back to the sidelines and he goes like this? <laughs> it's big, man. He's got to find a way to say, no, i got to get myself back to what do I have to do to lead my team with courage and focus and keep working and correcting my mistakes? So the outcome of that situation, which is going to happen to all of you in the next year, if not the next day, somebody's going to make you mad. Okay? Somebody's going to make you mad, and you're going to find a way to say, wait a minute, Nick Lowry and my teammates, which is this class, we're all about, about bringing out the best in each other. So there's another question you can ask yourself. You can ask yourself a, a, an empowering question, or you ask yourself a, a question that makes you feel weaker. The weaker question is, why do I always feel this way? I feel, I feel weak. As opposed to, how can I turn what makes me mad into feeling more in control of myself and helping this other person figure out what is the issue, the real underlying thing? Maybe they don't feel good about themselves. And that's why they want to make me feel bad and mad. So you've done a, that's a skill set for life, Roosevelt. If you can turn anger into being able to make that other people, person feel a little better about themselves without sacrificing who you are. Don't sacrifice who you are either. Think of the great heroes, by the way. Okay, we talked about Teddy Roosevelt, Muhammad Ali. How about Martin Luther King and Mahatma Gandhi? You know what their whole mission in life was? To say we can get rights for African Americans. We can get rights for India as a state which has been controlled and bullied by the British, I'm part British, so I know this story. My uncle was in India. My under, uncle was the assistant, Gerald Bray, to the, the uh, Viceroy of India. So I know this story for the British side. They had the money, they had the power, and Mahatma Gandhi, in the same, in the same way, Martin Luther King said, we, through nonviolence, have as much power or more than any violence we could ever perpetrate. Does that make sense? Yes. That's powerful. What's more courageous? I got a gun, I got my fists, I'm going to take it out on you, so I'm not going to fight. I'm going to have the discipline and the courage to focus on what we have in common, work through this moment as uncomfortable as it is, until we do figure out more about how we have things in common than we don't. Which one is more courageous? Not to fight is more courageous. It's hard. I'm not saying back down in the sense of make yourself feel bad. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about simply not engaging that anger in a, in a physical way. Okay?